Here on Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report, I'm Amy Goodman with Juan Gonzalez. Well, in media news, the Sinclair Broadcast Group is reportedly nearing a $4 billion deal to purchase Tribune Media, which would give it control of more than a third of the country's local television stations. The reported purchase comes after President Trump's pick to head the FCC, Ajit Pai, dramatically rolled back limits capping the number of stations one corporation can control. Sinclair's chairman and former CEO David Smith is active in Republican politics and supported Donald Trump's campaign. All this comes as Ajit Pai has outlined a sweeping plan to dismantle net neutrality rules, which seek to keep the Internet open and prevent corporate service providers from blocking access to websites, slowing down content or providing paid fast lanes for Internet service. Pai unveiled the plan last month in a forum hosted by FreedomWorks, a right-wing group backed by the billionaire Koch brothers. The plan would end a rule classifying the Internet as a public utility, leaving the industry to largely police itself. That draft proposal will be voted on during the agency's next meeting later this month. The plan was recently criticized by comedian John Oliver, moments after Oliver urged viewers to file comments opposing Pi's plan, the FCC's website crashed from the overload. Well, for more, we go to Washington, D.C., where we're joined by Craig Aaron, president and CEO of Free Press. Craig, welcome back to Democracy Now! Why are you so concerned about this? Uh, th thanks for having me, Amy. Well, you know, we're really concerned about so many things happening at the FCC right now, because Ajit Pai, Donald Trump's pick to head the agency, has been dismantling uh, all kinds of consumer protections and regulations, certainly net neutrality, uh, which many of us consider the, the First Amendment of the Internet, what protects your ability to go online, do whatever you want, go wherever you want, and download whatever you want. And at the same time, they're unleashing unprecedented a wave of media consolidation, allowing a company like Sinclair uh, to expand far, far beyond uh, the, the limits that were established by Congress on how many stations one company should be allowed to own. So we're seeing a concentration of power at, uh, on the broadcast side. At the same time, they are building up uh, these powerful new gatekeepers, really doing the bidding of the most powerful companies. Uh, and, and just paving the way for them to do whatever they want. And, Craig, uh, most, uh, most Americans are not familiar with Sinclair. It's not like uh, the, the big television networks. Its, it's, it's, it's name is not a household name. But it's increasingly uh, gathered a lot of power. And also, aren't, uh, haven't they been a pioneer of the model of news, where they, they create hub cities uh, that, in essence, provide news to various, uh, to a half dozen or a dozen different cities, so that there's no real local news coming? coming out from a lot of their stations, so they've sort of dumbed down the, the process of even providing local news across America? Yeah, they've done a number of different experiments, but essentially, yes, they put the same kind of cookie-cutter content across their network, which, if they get this deal done, will be well over 200 local television stations. So they both like to try to buy up multiple stations in the same market, have one newscast going on multiple channels, as well as doing as much as they can from Sinclair headquarters in terms of pushing content out to their whole network. Now, there are good reporters uh, working in all of these newsrooms trying to cover local communities, but uh, the word comes down from on high that they need to supplement their programs with right-wing commentary, slanted coverage of national politics, and Sinclair is pushing that, trying to become really a national network, pushing very slanted, conservative right-wing views everywhere they go, which, if they can complete this deal, will include uh, pretty much all the biggest markets in the country. Craig Aaron, can you talk about the link between Sinclair Broadcast Group uh, and support for President Trump? Well, they've rolled out the red carpet for President Trump, uh, you know, right after the election. Jared Kushner, the president's son-in-law and advisor, indicated that he'd struck a deal with Sinclair for favorable coverage, where they would air uh, Trump speaking at length without interruption. Uh, so that's the kind of things that they've allowed. They've hired multiple Trump spokespeople. 
uh, mouthpieces from the administration to come on the air, uh, give the administration's views. And, and certainly for years and years now, going all the way back to when they famously aired the Swift Boat Veterans for Truth video uh, that helped sink the candidacy of John Kerry, uh, they have never hesitated, especially around a national election, to put coverage out there that favors their favorite candidate. That candidate is Donald Trump. And from the day after he was elected, Sinclair has been popping champagne bottles because they figured that now they would get it back. This quid pro quo would happen. They gave this great coverage, and now they're coming for their reward, which is the lifting of longstanding limits on media ownership. And more about the CEO, David Smith. Well, David Smith has been a big Republican donor for a long time, building up this network. Uh, he, he, he gives huge amounts of money to Republican candidates and causes. But, of course, the most valuable thing they do is actually uh, open up their airwaves to Republican views. And David Smith is a guy who has instructed his company over the years to try to evade as many rules as possible, setting up shell companies to control more stations, uh, trying to do everything they can to get around the Federal Communications Commission's restrictions. But you listen to everything coming out of Sinclair headquarters now, and they're not worried about that anymore. More. They're not worried about the FCC getting in the way here, because it's the FCC who is arranging for them to be able to pull off these mega deals. Could you talk about uh, Armstrong Williams, uh, one of their hosts who got fined for the FCC and how the company reacted to that? Well, yeah, it's really remarkable, because here is a guy, Armstrong Williams, actually got caught uh, going on Sinclair and pushing policies while he was on the payroll of the Bush administration as a consultant, but he didn't disclose it. So the FCC actually has fined Sinclair for airing fake news. And yet what Sinclair did is, is not only did they not take Armstrong Williams off the air, uh, they actually promoted him and set him up as the CEO of a front company that allowed them to control and buy more stations. So that tells you a lot about uh, what this company thinks about uh, payola and fake news. So this is very interesting that this is all happening while the Fox empire is kind of in freefall, right? You have O'Reilly out, Roger Ailes out. Can you talk about the significance of this and also what this can mean for election coverage? Well, I, I think you, you hit on it, Amy, it's talking about election coverage, because Sinclair's strategy up to this point has really focused on a lot of swing states, middle America. Uh, you know, the Trump team was boasting that Sinclair uh, reached more voters in the state of Ohio than CNN. Uh, so they have built up uh, stations all across the country, giving them an incredible reach when it comes to elections, especially reaching older voters who still turn into broadcast television. So uh, in many ways, Sinclair has become a rival to Fox, uh, a giant of media and conservative media in particular. Uh, there were a lot of rumors that Rupert Murdoch was going to try to get in here and try to buy these Tribune stations. Uh, he did not end up bidding. Uh, Fox News Corp did not end up bidding on these stations. And now Sinclair will be by far the biggest uh, chain in the country, again, pushing that political agenda. It's an incredible amount of media power in one company. Uh, now, Craig, this purchase is only made possible because of changes in ownership uh, rules that, uh, that uh, Ajit Pai introduced. Why are these rules even important these days? Some, some people would say, well, with the spread of the Internet and social media, uh, television, broadcast television is less important these days. Uh, why is it so important to maintain these limitations on ownership? Well, well, there's no question that the media landscape is changing, and, and for many of us, there are new places to get news and information. But local TV news is still the number one source for news, uh, the number one source people have for information on local politics. Uh, and there are many people who don't have access to high-speed Internet service, and, and their best chance to find out what's happening in their communities is going to be over the public airwaves. And that's why it's so important that we actually have a diversity of voices uh, committed to local communities on these airwaves. That's why these rules were established, was so that you'd have competing ideas. It's fine to have a conservative broadcaster. It's not fine to just have a conservative broadcaster on your airwaves. And local ownership, diversity of ownership, ensures a diversity of viewpoints, and uh, it's, it's really key to just having an informed citizenry and a functioning democracy. And what the FCC has done here is truly scandalous, because what they've actually done is they've gone back and reinstated outdated rules just to make it appear 
uh, in FCC land, like Sinclair doesn't own as many TV stations as they actually do. If they get this deal done in all their pending deals, Sinclair will reach 72 percent of the U.S. population. The federal limit on one company is supposed to be 39 percent. So the FCC went in and actually put back an old rule that is now meaningless from a technical standpoint to discount how the FCC looks at the number of stations they own. So it looks like they own uh, half as many stations as they actually do, which is the way they're paving the way for this deal. And if you, you listen to what Sinclair is saying, they expect the FCC to follow up and get rid of other limits and other restrictions as well. And, in fact, at that May 18th FCC meeting, uh, the FCC is putting out a public notice to start uh, the review of ownership rules once again. So at a time where we need more local news, more competition, more choices, better informed communities, what we're getting is the same cookie-cutter content coast to coast.